Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomix. This time I will show you how to perform an axisymmetric analysis of a toroidal pressure vessel. Let's create a new model first. And we have to choose a model space. In the previous tutorials we covered plane stress and plane strain analysis. And this time we'll discuss the axisymmetric analysis. So let's choose this uh, type of model space. And now I'll input the geometry. Mm, that's the, the one here. Uh, as you can see the geometry is divided into two parts. That's the result of partitioning in FreeCAD. Uh, but it's not a problem, I can just create a compound part from this. Uh, and now I will specify the meshing parameters for this part. Uh, I will use uh, a maximum element size of one half meters. And I will mesh this part uh, to um, be able to define the actual analysis setup. Uh, let's define the material first. Uh, I will specify the typical uh, properties for uh, steel. Uh, you know, know these uh, properties from previous tutorials. Uh, and you may notice that there are some uh, some additional options for materials uh, that were introduced in this version uh, because I used the new, the new version uh, released a few days ago. Uh, uh, let's create a section. This will be just a regular solid section using the, the material uh, defined before. Uh, since it's an axisymmetric analysis, we don't have to define the thickness. Mm, so it's just a regular solid section without any additional settings. Uh, and now I will define, uh, you can see that amplitudes are also a new uh, feature in, the, in this release. Uh, and let's create a new step, another new thing, uh, sleepwear step is, uh, is something new, uh, but we'll use uh, just a regular static step this time. Uh, and now let's define boundary conditions and loads, uh, something that we did uh, in all the previous tutorials. When it comes to boundary conditions, I will just uh, fix uh, these two edges uh, in mm, y direction. Uh, and uh, that's it for the boundary conditions and now I'll specify pressure and that will act uh, on these uh, two internal uh, edges and the value of this pressure is uh, 2 megapascals. I should also add that uh, when it comes to axis metric analysis the models should be defined in XY uh, plane as you can see this is uh, done here uh, but also uh, they should use the y-axis as as, a, as an axis of symmetry uh, so that that's the uh, requirement for uh, axis metric analysis uh, and uh, what we should uh, do uh, now is uh, switch to 3d output we'll use we'll need this later on uh, and that's it when it comes to the definition of the analysis uh, so we can run this uh, as you can see, we already have the results. Uh, it, it really was uh, fast. Uh, and now let's compare the results to the analytical solution. Uh, so let's check the analytical solution. Uh, first of all, let's verify the stresses. Uh, so here's the uh, full misses stress that we expect. Uh, it was calculated for the uh, radius denoted as uh, R1. Uh, R1 is right here. Uh, so let's check this in Prepomex. Uh, let's switch to full misses stress and use the query tool to verify the stress uh, around uh, this location. Uh, you can see the values of the stress, uh, they are quite, uh, quite close to uh, what we expect from the analytical solution. A bit higher, but, uh, but still a uh, pretty good result. Uh, and uh, it's uh, around this, uh, this uh, location that the values are uh, similar. And now let's check the displacements. Uh, as you can see I also calculated the, um, the value of the expansion of the radius of this uh, toroidal pressure vessel. Uh, so let's switch to displacements uh, and let's see uh, what uh, what is the value uh, for this uh, location because the, the calculation here was performed for the radius uh, of uh, R, it should be actually noted as R2 and uh, this is the, the radius right here. Uh, so mm, we can see uh, that the value is uh, very close to the analytical solution uh, once again. If we compare this with the uh, value we obtained uh, in this uh, spreadsheet. And now uh, let's uh, go back to, uh, to the uh, visualization of the model. Uh, we can do one more thing before we, uh, we, we end the, the post-processing. Uh, we can go to transformation mm, and uh, use the circular pattern. Uh, and since this is actually displayed in 3D, uh, we can utilize this fact and uh, let's specify the angle of 2 degrees. Uh, that's because uh, this is the expansion angle used by Calculix to expand the uh, axis metric anal elements uh, to 3D ones. Uh, and, and I should also specify the number of items. Uh, it should be the, the angle that I want to uh, actually uh, visualize divided by 2. So let's uh, specify, for example, 45, and let's see how this will look like. Uh, as you can see, this is the incorrect axis, so let's change the 
uh, the axis right here mm, and now uh, this will be a correct visualization the quarter of the actual um, part that we want to uh, visualize uh, and now if I specify 90 degrees I will see uh, half of this and of course if I specify uh, more than that I can see the whole uh, toroidal pressure vessel. Uh, this would take a while to, go to compute this, uh, so let's let's go back to the uh, half of this uh, of this uh, geometry, and I can also uh, disable the display of um, of the edges uh, to make this look better. Uh, and this is how uh, the model looks like uh, if we uh, apply the uh, if we apply the transformation feature uh, to display the. Uh, results on the 3d uh, representation of the model of course i can uh, switch between the different variables and uh, visualize uh, how it looks like you can see some uh, artifacts from from the uh, because th this is just polar pattern of uh, of some segments uh, two degree uh, white of the uh, of the model but still you can visualize the uh, whole thing in uh, 3d uh, that's it for this Prepomax tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.